Hi. Okay, Here guys. we are in Bedford. It has been. Yeah. We we were we were at, we Double. were trying to go to a scenic, beautiful location to do this, and the phone didn't work. This is our third location. Peaks of Otter. Yeah, with this is, and we were at a waterfall, then the Peaks of Otter, and, and it was beautiful. But, but it, we had no power. We had no service on our phones, so it's kind of like living the Christian life without utilizing the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. There you go, baby. We can't live the Christian life on our own. No, we cannot. We Great have to. Sorry about that this morning. The Holy Jonathan Spirit follow. has to work through us. It's an overflowing of abundance of the Holy Spirit that we live the Christian life. Not what we do it. We'll do it every time. Tim and Veronica crack clay. So we're making do here at a table. in a fair-proof marriage we, God's way. We just were driving down the street and saw a restaurant that's closed with tables out front. So we pulled over and we're borrowing and one it's a great tables. restaurant right here. In it's beautiful, a great romantic. restaurant in Bedford Town Bedford. Kitchen Provision. Uh -huh. uh, ironically, I had dinner here Thursday with Natalie if she watches yeah, this. That's okay, awesome. so we're making do and uh, mm -hmm. this is not ideal. I'm we sorry love, about my shirt. Yeah, we okay, love you guys. So tonight we're but, talking about opposition and who's the opposition? The devil, even to marriage. And yeah, obviously they want to talk tonight. Okay, so a healthy marriage is all about focus. Focus on God, His right. purpose and power. Is your focus on God and His purpose and power, or is it on yourself and what you want? Is it but on the devil is defeated, though, honey. How can he? What, but what's no, your no. focus on right now, right? The right. devil is defeated. It is. Right. He is. He is. Tell me why. Okay, so, um, and he talks about you know people go to marriage counseling, and we know a lot of counselors. People go to marriage counseling and. They have lists and lists, and you know, people tell you all the things that they have come in with a list of complaints about their spouse and everything their spouse has done, and the marriage is all that. The marriage would be great if it wasn't for their spouse, right? Because they don't do anything wrong, do they? Do they? We do, honey. We do. And the devil tries to get us to think that it's not the devil. I mean, he didn't even want to think that he's alive because he wants us to put all of our blame on the spouse. Right? right, he does. He yeah. does want us to put all the blame on our spouse, and that's so that's his ploy, right? So, um, but the bottom line is, you could talk about, you could go through and fix everything. Your spouse could go through and fix everything that is on your list of problems, right. of complaints about your spouse. Right. And you know what? You're just going to come up with a new list. Why is that? Because you have to have a spiritual foundation of your relationship. Without the spiritual foundation in your relationship, then there's gonna be nothing but complaints and the devil is gonna get in there and divide you and conquer, divide and conquer like he did with Adam and Eve, between God and with the apple. Right. Um, so without establishing, uh, without establishing a solid spiritual relationship, nothing's gonna change. And when you get this one thing right, then all other things are going to fall into place, right? So what you have to do in your marriage is to get a divine perspective on your marriage for your home and that you'll just and then you'll discover who your true enemy is and that it is not in fact your spouse. When we fight in our marriages, so we just talked about that, we've seen the the spouse's issue, but that's what he wants. The devil wants you to think your spouse is the issue. And but the problem is spiritual war that's brought on by your own sinful flesh or by the rebellious and clever enemy of God. Um, however, which is Lucifer. Right. What makes a marriage strong is a loving with is building a loving, biblically grounded marriage based on the, like the fruits of the spirit, patience, kindness, loyalty, grace, right. um, which are in alignment with God's covenant. And purpose, covenantal purpose for marriage. I'm sorry with all the oh, yeah, cars, traffic. Yeah, um, anyway, so without all that, we end up fighting all the time, right? We can, if if we can do that one thing, if it can do that, because what am I? It's not that one little thing. Oh, under the train. Okay, wait a minute. It's a little dark out here, guys. It's getting dark. Hmm. Okay, so where was I? About alignment with God's covenantal purpose for marriage. So there's a lot of things we end up fighting about, and we then have to do with the consequences of our own choices, right? We have concept, we make choices, and those every time we make a choice, it has a consequence, and sometimes that causes disruption in our marriage. But one little thing can put us in divorce court, 
And then you end up wondering how does something so small become so big, right? Um, but it's not about that one little thing. It's not about that it's little thing. It's not about that thing. Yes. No. It's, it's about the marriage covenant being broken right. through a lack of submission, as we talked about submission by both parties under the transcendence of God. Right. And it's about the lack of alignment with each other and God or violating the covenantal rules of love and respect, which we did a whole study on love and respect. And that is very, that is the covenantal rules of marriage, okay? It's like asking, it's like asking how that one little apple, that one little piece of fruit in the Garden of Eden brought down all of humanity, right? Basically, it, um, it, they, but it the, wasn't about the it fruit. It wasn't because of the fruit. It, was, it wasn't about the fruit, was it? It was about their disobedience of God. It was about the disobedience of order, God. Out of whack. They came out, they were yeah. out of their order, which is then what caused the curse. Right. right? So Satan wants to destroy your marriage, not because, not just because he wants to destroy your marriage, but because he knows that in doing so, he's also going to destroy your legacy. Because whoever owns the family owns the future. Owns that is the future. Out. Isn't that true? Isn't that profound? Boy, are we just... Whoever owns the family owns the future. We've been and there, that done is that, what, experiencing that. Well, and just think about today's world and society and what we're fighting against right now. I mean, the, the forces are, uh, that want to take down the, the, the traditional family, want to take down the family, whoever, think about that, whoever owns the family owns, owns the, the future. future. That is so important. So... Um, when Satan was tempting Eve and with the fruit, what he did is he took away the lordship of God. He referred to God in a, a watered-down version. He took away the rulership and relationship with humanity in his conversation with her. Right. And so he does that. He talked about, like, oh, what she was going to gain from the tree of knowledge. But he didn't talk about the evil that would result right. from it. Devil so never, never tells the truth. He's just telling half truths. He's really All good at the half truths. All based like on So many lies. times we've said, we just when it comes to his needs and her needs, how right. he'll get in there and tell you, you know, if you're half not truth. that half truth, well, she's not doing that, so I deserve that. He's not doing that, so I, do, I deserve better than this, so right. I'm perfect, right? John, not none the, of us are perfect. Right? Devil, that's is, what he devil is smart. He's not going to tell you in the middle of Friday afternoon, let's go rob a bank. He's going to do it a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Slowly, slowly, inching, your, inching you to compromise your morals until it's a complete moral failure on your part. We know we've been there. Um, so, decisions made apart from God's wisdom notoriously wind up causing more harm than good, as we saw in the Garden of Eden. Right? right? And so... What happens in our homes is we allow him to stoke the fires of discontent and contempt in our homes. He distorts the image of God through us as married couples and keeps us from accomplishing our own dominion purposes. Right. The purpose God has for us that we talked about in the first chapter. That's why you have to commit your marriage. You have to commit your marriage to prayer and cultivate a real relationship in humility while seeking God's wisdom and guidance and asking for his love, grace, and mercy in right. all things, right? So how it's important that you, instead of fighting each other, that you know who your real enemy know is. Know who your enemy is. That's the evil one. You know who your real enemy is. It says in Ephesians, for one Ephesians 6.12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world focuses, forces, or against the world forces of the darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's Ephesians six twelve. And so our battle is not our with our enemy. spouse. It's, it's not devil. with our spouse. Sometimes what happens is he uses our spouse, right? He uses our spouse to bring us down, to make us feel defeated. So the whole universe is divided into two kingdoms. Two ways, two darkness rounds. and light. Right, darkness There's no and light. middle ground. Nope. Either you're going towards him and living for Jesus, or you're going away from him. Mm -hmm. There's no middle ground. Right. So even though he's already been defeated with the cross, right. he wants to take as many people with him as he can. And also important to note... While he can't rob you of your salvation, he still comes after Christians even harder because he wants to keep you from living in that full joy and peace that you have from surrendering your life to Jesus by truly surrendering your life and removing sin 
trying to remove something. Right. So the, the Satan knows he's not going to win. Right. It's just like my Cleveland Indians sometimes. They're out of the race back as a childhood all my life. But they got satisfaction out of beating someone, maybe the New York Yankees, to keep them from getting in the playoffs. That's how the devil does. He knows he's going to lose. As Christians, we're on the winning team. But the devil, he, as long as he can keep you from going to heaven, then he loves that because he knows he, you're going to go with him. That's what he wants. So he doesn't want your marriage to to um, be a full and happy marriage. He wants you to be miserable, so he's throwing the darts at you anywhere he can get in. He knows right. where your weaknesses are. He does. That's why, that's why that one log, it's really hard to get one log going by itself in a fire. But if you get two or three logs together, boy, they kind of kindle each other and get her close and getting that fire going. Before you know you have a fire going. So the devil knows that a strength, we have strength with each other as fellow soldiers. You never go to war alone. You have fellow soldiers to be there with each other. Right, so one of, and then this is really, I like that he addressed this in this chapter of opposition. I remember the Grand Kingdom era, yeah. Tony Evans. Um, one of the reasons God allows hell on earth, because people are always asking, why does God allow bad things right. to happen? Right. Why does God allow this? this? Awesome. And one of the reasons why God allows hell on earth and the, it allows hell to be hell on earth and the devil to wage war is that each is so that each of us can know God's name and recognize the power that comes the from him. The power of him. The power that comes from him. We will never know his name if there's no war. We right. will never know his power if there's no temptation. Right. We will never know his strength if there's no opportunity to use his armor. So let the war. So he lets the war rage, and often in ways that are going to bring us to our knees, right. because we have no other choice but to seek him and to and to grow closer to him. Greater is he in us than he that's in the mm -hmm. world. So Satan would be perfectly happy if he believed that you did. If you believe that he didn't even exist, that's what he wants. Because and that your real problem is just your spouse, right? That right. so right. you think the marriage is your marriage would be great if it wasn't for your spouse. Right. And he's behind the scenes throwing the darts. Wherever the weaknesses are, making them wedge. And not meet needs or respect or... Driving the wedges between you between and yourself. Trying to break up your marriage. Because nice God designed it. Marriage goodness. came from God. It's the okay. example of God in us mm -hmm. as the body of Christ. So your ability to remain as a couple, to remain spiritually strong, is a function of your relationship with each other before the Lord. How often do you pray together? How often do you pray with your spouse? You should be praying together daily. Every day. Every day. How often do you pray day. for your marriage? Right. It Read should the Bible. be daily. Bible How often? Reading. You should be praying several times through the day for your marriage. You should be praying all the time for your marriage. Do you worship together? Do you read the Bible together? Do you talk about the sermon together? Do you talk about the sermon together? Do you go to church together? Do you read the Bible? As Life like group. If you want. With other Christians. If you want a marriage that is until death do you part and not the miserable kind where you're just willing to right. live together and hate each other because you made it because you're in this covenant but one that is truly blessed that you can fulfill the blessings of god on your marriage and then you need the, th need the spiritual component of life must be an integral part of who you are as a couple it means both of you both of you are responsible for your relationship with the Lord and victory in your marriage requires a personal relationship with Jesus Christ to be close, not piggybacked on someone else's. You can't piggyback your faith on your spouse's faith. You need to have your own personal God, faith. Be, and then it's like right. that triangle, right? You're both here, God's up here. The closer you grow together to God, the closer so you, you get. Together, right? right? The closer right. you get. Um, so... I know. Um, so what we're we can't we can't defeat the devil on our own, and that's why God's given us all yeah. of the resources to do so. He so can, he's given the, the whole Lucifer armor of God. is an angel. He was an angel kicked out of heaven because mm -hmm. he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be greater than God. So Lucifer is a creation from God. So you ask yourself, who's greater, God or the, this terrible angel? Jesus, man. don't fall to temptation. Don't, don't, don't yield to it. Do it God's way. Boy, so, it's miserable. If you're not miserable from doing something you shouldn't be doing, if you're not miserable, 
That's the Holy Spirit inside you convicting you of sin. Because he that breaks that relationship. He wants our relationship with you. He wants to give you all the blessings. God blesses the heart of a righteous man. Not the guy who's sinning and trying to get away with it and trying to live on both sides of the fence. It doesn't work that way. Either you're for, you're running to Jesus, or you're running away from him. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. Seek after him with your spouse. So our greatest time is wake up in the morning and seek in Jesus' face together. It's okay to have your daily devotions by yourself, but we even like it better together because we're stronger together. We're as, because we're as one as a union. We're married, we're as one. We're, we're one person here with two, two parts, but we're one person. So that makes us, that, that defeats the devil more, okay? So, um, so he's given us everything we need. God has given us everything we need to combat this for the our marriage. Bible. He's given us the Bible. The Bible. He's given us community. All the answers to the Bible. I mean, community. If you go to church, you're in a community of believers, and we talked about accountability and groups. And we read the Bible. Accountability that, partners. Let right. me just say, honey, we, we, we read the we read Ephesians probably four or five, six times, and we read all the Bible. Every time we go back to it, the Holy Spirit gives us something new, right? That we didn't know before. Every time we read it. We get, he tells us something different. I mean, all the answers are in this awesome book. If we just read this every day and see what the Lord has to tell us, wow. So he gives us his armor, as we learn, the armor the of armor, God. The full armor. The full armor of God. Um, he says, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand firm. Therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness... And having shed, it's getting dark. Can you cut your flashlight on? Shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, in which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take up the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Um, and that's so you're going to experience victory. Victory is yours for the taking if you do what God says and pick up the armor. So and he's that, giving you everything he need, you need, but it's up to you to do it. He's not going to dress you. He's not going to dress you. He's not going to force you. He's giving you free will. Right. So it's your choice. You can either do battle God's way, take up the armor, seek God in your marriage, right. seek God together as a couple, right. or you can fall to the enemy or keep every fighting each other. Keep yield, fighting each other. Every time you go and don't yield to temptation, it gets better. It gets better. You build that, you build that building up against the evil one who's trying to destroy you. So victory, victory in your marriage must rest on the reality that God has given you everything you need to live the light of this truth in order to experience all he's planned for you and to become all he created you to be. But like I said, he's not going to dress you. You have to get up and put on the armor of God every single day. Every day. For the victory to be yours. It's just like us working out. we got to work out every day with our bodies. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we don't work out every day, man, we don't like it, do we, honey? We don't no. like it. We go, we, I don't think we can go one day without working out. Same thing with working out spiritually. You know what? You know what? I work out spiritually with the that Bible. That was like truth this week. I mean, we always do our devotion together, but then I always have a little time by myself where I do a, a daily journaling. Daily devotions, right. I do a daily journaling. I read my own little devotion every day mm -hmm. by myself, and then we work out. And I had some. I had to go to Richmond one day this week, and I had to go to the lake, and I had to go I had business meetings at like 8 o'clock in the morning. It threw my whole right. week off that my mornings, like, I should have gotten up earlier. I should have gotten up at, like, 5 o'clock right. in order to get it all done because I was, like, a right. horrible right. wreck Friday night because right. I didn't get my workout, my devotion, my personal devotion time. I mean, it, it affected me. Because you go it one day without working out, it's easy to go another one in there. Well, it's not for me. Because, when, it, it's because, a, because just one but, makes but it. But when you're new wow. to it. But it's when, hard to get back. When you're first... I mean, when you're new to it, it's not Same like thing with going to programmed church. in your body yet. When it's not part of your DNA yet, and part of your muscle memory, you know, then it is easy to skip it and keep. Don't let the devil keep, keep it from the Lord's but house. It keeps me um, sane. Keep the Lord's house because we, we go. We don't go to church one time. Man, it's easier to go not to go the next time. Easier the next time. Stay with it. Lord's coming back soon. Let's live for Him. 
the, sh the world you know is looking, the and, world's and, looking at us. They're watching what we're doing. And even if you like made Let's that, show if even if you made that profession of faith and you're a Christian, but you're living in misery, there is still only you can only get healing at the through cross. Him at through the cross. the cross at, at the, the cross. cross. And so just pick up your Bible, read your Bible, come back to Jesus, pray, pray, read your Bible, seek the Lord. And prayer is just a conversation with Him. You just talk to Him like He's. Pray without ceasing. So all day long we talk to him. Right. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. There are many times. Jesus, I can't. Jesus, I don't have strength against this temptation. Holy Spirit, help me. We ask him, he'll help us. Because we can't do it on our own. But with him inside of us, we can. There are many times I'm having like a bad day. I just, and I'm like, okay, here. I just go get by myself somewhere and say a quick prayer. I just pray. We can't live the supernatural spirit supernatural Christian life on our own mm -hmm. we can't only it says in Galatians he works the supernatural power through us he does Jesus does it's the Holy Spirit we can't, we can't do, it, do it we can't do it on our own okay we love you guys we love you guys let us know sorry we, the devil tried to stop us from doing it tonight but we're not going to let him we're going we're gonna to defeat him we're going to persevere and we're gonna we persevere there the may be have been some traffic and it may be getting dark just like this marriage in well, right because we love each other right. okay yeah. let us know if you have any um Prayer request and uh, he tries we'll to see get you in soon. our marriage. We're not going to let him defeat him. Do it God's way. Right. 